Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will weave such a basket. If you are just learning how to weave the newspaper baskets, I recommend using the templates. I still do, even though I have many years of experience in weaving the newspaper baskets. This time I will use a plastic container from the dog biscuits, but you can use whatever you have available. The circumference of my container is 65 cm. It has two ribs, which will obstruct the weaving. That's why I will cover them up with the cardboard. I cut a rectangular piece of cardboard 65 by 27 cm, wrapped it around the jar, and secured it in place with the adhesive tape. The template for weaving a basket is ready. All the paper rolls are divided into two groups, the stakes and the weavers. I kept the stakes dry and prepared the weavers by following the steps described in the video above. It's of utmost importance to have the weavers prepared properly. Another important thing is the glue. You can use the PVA or white glue, but I highly recommend using the glue which has an instant grab, crystal clear and fast dry formula. For example, Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Such glue will considerably simplify the weaving process. I usually draw up some glue in a small syringe and refill it as needed. So let's start weaving. Take four stakes. They will form a 2x2 center of the round bottom, also called the slath. Take two weavers and glue the butt ends of both weavers to each other. I will show you how to do it. Cut approximately 2 cm at the butt end of the first weaver to make a long point. Cut the tiny corner off at the butt end of the second weaver to make sure the edge of the butt is even. Put a drop of glue into the butt end of the second weaver. Thin the butt end of the first weaver down by pressing it with your fingers. Then make a kink in the middle with your nail, fold the butt end of the rod and insert it as far as it goes into the hollow of the second weaver. Rotate the weavers a little bit to make sure the rods are connected. Fold the weavers you have just glued in half and put them around the first pair of stakes. Start weaving around the slats clockwise. Bring the weaver from the back up and over the stake and the top weaver down behind. Do the same again around the next stake, bringing the weaver from the back up and over and the top weaver down behind. Rotate the slats as we go so that the handling is the same with each stroke. Keep the weavers pulled in tightly as you go. This type of weaving is called pairing weave. Now I will show you how to connect the weavers. 
If at the very start of making the bottom of the basket we connected the paper rods butt to butt, in all the other cases we connect the paper rods tip to butt. This part of the weaver shall not be used for connecting the rods. Always cut it off. This piece can be anywhere between 2 to 4 cm long, depending on your own rods and the weaving pattern. Bring the top weaver down behind the stake and make a kink in this weaver at the spot where it touched the stake. Cut the tip end of the weaver to make a long point. Make sure to cut a couple of millimeters away from the kink you made. Thin the place where you cut the weaver by pressing it with your fingers. Make a kink in the middle with your nail and fold the tip. Put a drop of glue into the butt end of the new weaver and insert one rod into another as far as it goes. Rotate the weavers a little bit to make sure the rods are connected. Repeat the process with the second weaver. If you connected the rods properly, you will be able to see the seam only on the back side of the basket. The front side will be seamless. After making two rows, a row is also called a round, start spreading the stakes out, weaving around one stake at a time.
I wove five rounds and it's time to add more stakes. I will show you one of the ways to do it. I don't need long stakes for this bottom, that's why I will cut each stake in half at an acute angle. If you need longer stakes for the bottom of your basket, use the whole stake. You still need to cut about 2 cm off the butt end of the paper rod to make a long point. Make a space next to the existing stake using a knitting needle or an awl. Apply a little bit of the glue and insert the paper rod with the cut surface facing the neighboring stake. Add the stakes all around the bottom. Weave another round or two to make sure the added stakes are held firmly in place. I wove two rounds. Now start spreading the stakes out, weaving around one stake at a time. You can use a knitting needle to help spread the stakes out. Make several more rounds with the pairing weave. Pull the weave in as close as possible as you go. I wove 4 more rounds after spreading the stakes out or 13 rounds altogether. The distance between the stakes now is 2.5 cm, which means I need to add more stakes, otherwise the weave will become very loose. I have almost finished weaving the bottom of the basket, therefore I don't need to add the stakes at their full length, because I will be replacing them soon anyway. I will cut the paper rods in half and will insert them to the right of the existing stakes in the same way as I did it earlier in this video.
weave one or two rounds with the double sticks and then spread them out. Make more rounds with a pair and weave up until you reach the desired size of the bottom. If the stakes are getting too short or you need to make them longer, cut the stake that needs to be elongated at the very bottom. Use a knitting needle to make some space in the weave. If last time we inserted the new paper rod next to the existing stake, in this case we need to insert it right over the existing stake. Make sure the cut surface of the new stake touches the existing stake, otherwise the weave will not look neat. I use the sheer cutter plate of model 170, you can buy it online on Amazon, AliExpress, Walmart and many other places. I tried at least a dozen different cutters and decided in favor of this one. I need the bottom 20 cm in diameter, so I wove 20 rounds all together. By the time you finish weaving the bottom, the distance between the stakes should be anywhere between 1.5 and 2 cm. If you need a larger bottom than I weave in this video, add more stakes and weave more rounds. The number of stakes and the number of rounds depends on the size of the basket you would like to weave. I finished weaving the bottom of the basket. 
Now I need to turn the side stakes up vertically. You'll need to moisturize the stakes before bending them, otherwise they will crack. The stakes can be moisturized in several different ways. I will show you my favorite way of doing it. You will need the lukewarm water, a small towel and a syringe. I use a 3 ml syringe. Fill the syringe with water, insert a needle into the hollow of a paper rod and inject the water. Fill all the rest of stakes with water in this manner. If you injected enough water into the stake, it will be warm to touch and also it will be just as flexible as the weavers. Flip the weave over. Now we need to change the position of the weavers. If I continue to weave in with a pair in weave, the position of the weavers will look like that. I will show it once again. Instead, we need to reverse the weavers this way so that we could start weaving a three-strand twine, which is also called a three-rod row. I marked the first stake with a piece of the green masking tape. Turn the first two stakes up at the right angle, introduce the third weaver by folding it a little bit and placing behind the third stake. Take the leftmost rod, place it over two stakes behind the third one and out to the front. Now take the next leftmost rod and weave it in the same manner. Continue this manner around the basket, always weaving the leftmost rod and lifting the stakes at a right angle, one stake at a time. Add new weavers by gluing them in the same manner as I explained earlier in this video, that is tip to butt. Now we approach the first stake marked with a masking tape. Instead of taking the leftmost weaver, take the rightmost weaver, place it over two stakes, behind the third one and out to the front.
Now take the middle weaver, place it over two stakes, behind the third one and out to the front. Repeat the same steps with the leftmost weaver. The three row row is bound off. Weave one more round with a three strand twine and bind it off exactly the same way you did at the end of the first row. Now we can put the template in. When I weave, I usually put a template on a waist twisting disc. This time I will put a piece of plywood between the waist twisting disc and a template with a weave on it. I always put some weight into the template to hold it steady and to have more control when I weave. So the template is in and we are again at the very first stake marked with the green masking tape. Weave one more three row row. We reach the first stake again. Bind the three row row off as usual, starting from the rightmost weaver and placing it over two stakes behind the third one and out to the front. Continue in this manner with the remaining two weavers. 
Press the weave down to make sure it's tight. Now we will need to replace the stakes. It's going to take a while, that's why I put the plastic straws over the weavers. The plastic straws will keep the moisture in the weavers and will not let them dry. Cut the old stakes off as close as possible to the weave using the shear cutter. I have 32 stakes. I will continue weaving this basket with the ordinary randin. I will use the double stakes because it's easier to keep them upright. I prepared 64 dry paper rods and cut approximately 3 cm at the butt end of each dry paper rod to make a long point. All 64 rods are ready. Using a knitting needle, make a space to the right of the existing stake. Put some glue to the cut surface of the rod and insert it to the right of the old stake with the cut surface turned towards yourself. Make a space for the second rod, but this time insert a knitting needle in front of the existing stake. Don't forget to insert the new stake with the cut surface towards yourself. Add the double stakes all around the basket in the same manner. Remove the plastic straws. This time I marked the first set of stakes by putting a plastic straw on one of them instead of using a masking tape. Weave one more round with three rods.
Now we need to make a transition from the three rod weave to renting. Since we have the odd number of stakes, we will use two rods chasing one another for the ordinary renting. Right now we have three rods, so we need to remove one of them. Use the knitting needle to make some space under two weavers like that. Flatten the weaver a little bit and poke it in. Cut it off. Don't worry about the little piece of the weaver sticking out. We will hide it later on into the weave. Now we have two weavers left. Take the right weaver, place it in front of one stake, behind the other stake and back to the outside. Continue weaving in this manner up until you need to elongate the weaver. Go back to the weaver you left behind and weave it in the same manner. In front of one stake, behind the other stake and back to the outside. Keep weaving this way, alternating the weavers as if they are chasing one another.
the height of my basket at this point is 11 cm. Now we will make a transition from the ordinary rending to the three rod weave. In order to do that, we have to add one more weaver. Place it behind the stake this way and start weaving the three strand twine. Step up to the next row and weave the second round with the three strand twine. Finish the three rod weave and put the plastic straws over the weavers to keep the moisture in. Cut all the stakes off using the shear cutter. Prepare the dry rods. I have 32 stakes, that's why I prepare 32 dry rods by cutting approximately 3 cm off at the butt end of each dry paper rod to make a long point. All 32 rods are ready. Using a knitting needle, make a space between two existing stakes. Apply some glue to the cut surface of the paper rod and insert it between the existing stakes.
glue it all the way around the basket. Remove the plastic straws and weave another three row row. We reached the first take and now we need to bind the three row draw off. Take the rightmost weaver, place it over two stakes and behind the third stake, as you would have done if you wanted to step up to the next three row draw. However, this time thread it under two already woven rods. I use the knitting needle to show you exactly where to pass it. Repeat it with the remaining two weavers. We will trim the pieces of the weaver sticking out a little bit later. Make sure the height of the basket is the same all around it. Adjust it if necessary. Now we will make a three rod border. The most important part in weaving any border is making sure the stakes are properly moisturized. They should be just as flexible as the weavers. The stakes can be moisturized in several different ways. This time we will moisturize them using a syringe. I showed you a similar procedure earlier in this video. Fill the syringe with water, insert the needle into the hollow of a paper rod and inject the water. If you injected enough water into the steak, it will be warm to touch and will soften up right away. Put a plastic straw on the steak right after injecting the water into it. Fill all the rest of the steaks with water in this manner and put the plastic straws on them. Wait for about 20 minutes. Double check each stake before starting to make a border to make sure you injected the sufficient amount of water and the stakes are properly moisturized. If the stakes are not properly moisturized, they will crack as soon as you start bending them. Alternatively, instead of inserting the dry rods and then moisturizing them, you can insert the already moisturized weavers and can start weaving the border right away. Remove the plastic straws.
Prepare several pieces of the paper rods. I will call them auxiliary rods. I use the paper rods of another color for better contrast. Bend them in half, put one auxiliary rod behind the first stake and out to the front, put one more auxiliary rod in the same manner behind the second stake and out to the front. I haven't done it in this video, but it's better if you do it. Bend the first stake by placing it behind the second stake and out to the front. Repeat it with the second and third stakes. Now we have three consecutive stakes placed behind the respective neighboring stakes and out to the front. Take the leftmost weaver and place it behind the next stake and out to the front. Place the previous stake behind it and to the front. Make sure you put it behind, not on top of the weaver. Repeat this step with two more weavers. Now we have three pairs of weavers at the front. We will be taking the right weaver from the leftmost pair of the weavers and placing it behind the next stake and to the front up until we reach the very beginning of the border where we have the auxiliary rods.
Now we have only one upright stake left. Remove the auxiliary rod and put the right weaver from the leftmost pair of weavers behind the stake and out to the front. Place the last upright stake behind it and out to the front. Take the right weaver from the leftmost pair of the weavers and put it behind the next stake and out to the front. Now we have two pairs of weavers left. Take the right weaver from the leftmost pair of the weavers and thread it in the place under the already woven two stakes. The auxiliary rod shows exactly where it should be placed. Now we have only one pair left. Take the right weaver from the pair and thread it into place under the already woven three stakes. Again, the auxiliary rod shows exactly where it should be placed. The three rod border is ready. Now we will cut off the pieces of the weaver sticking out at the front of the basket. Lift up the border a little bit and cut off the weaver using the shear cutter. Put the border back in place. Repeat the step all around the basket. Cut off the pieces of the weavers left after finishing the three rod twine both at the upper and at the lower part of the basket. The last step in making a basket is priming it with the mixture of the acrylic variation water. I use glossy mod podge water based sealer glue and finish mixed with water at the proportional one to one. It's the same solution I use for treating the paper rods after coloring. This step is very important because after you treat the basket with this mixture, it will become moisture proof, very solid, all the weavers will be glued to each other and it will be impossible to unweave the basket or to deform it in the course of the ordinary use. 
After you treat the basket with this mixture, you will be able to wash it as many times as you wish and to use the soft soap or even a brush or sponge for cleaning it if necessary. Apply the mixture generously all over the basket. Take another clean dry brush to ensure the even distribution of the mixture all over the basket. Leave the basket to air dry for several hours. I usually leave it overnight. The basket is ready.